Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your WWE Fastlane 2016 preview and predictions. Of course, as always, I am here with John, and this card looks pretty okay. But, John, I really want to know what you think about this pay-per-view so far. You know, Ashton, it's really interesting, man. I look at this card, and on paper, it looks pretty decent. But I, I think when you look at the main event in particular... And maybe one or two other matches, and my mind goes to the mid-card title matches, I, I think you really start to, I think, get more excited for them because of their potential implications for WrestleMania. I know you and I always start a preview predictions by gauging our hype level, you know, how excited we are for the upcoming show. And as it stands right now, and I would credit this mostly to the possibility that the main event contains... I would say my hype is actually about an 8, if I'm really being honest. I say I'm about an 8 right now, and I think doing this discussion with you is going to bring me to a full-blown 10, so we'll see what happens. But where do you stand right now, dude? How are you feeling about all this? It's so weird because it feels like the WWE is getting something right in that it seems like they're really kind of giving a higher percent of the roster something to do. But the right. problem I have is that the matches that they're really pushing and trying to feature are garbage. Okay. Because we okay. have seven we have seven matches on this card, and to me, the three that the WWE has featured the strongest being the triple threat for the world title, the Divas title, and then the six man tag match that got established on Monday are the worst of the seven. Yeah. Yeah, because like I am yeah. genuinely looking forward to Kalisto Del Rio, and the fact that that is stuck on the pre-show disgusts me. I am really looking forward to Becky and Sasha versus Naomi and Tamina, and I'm really looking forward to AJ Jericho. Owen Ziggler, you know, take it or leave it. I don't really care. But the, the other three matches that I mentioned before, the, the, the world title, the Divas title, and the six-man tag – I really just do not care at all about any of those matches. Like they've built up the triple threat match so much that it's gotten to the point that I've been desensitized to it, that I just don't care anymore. I just want to get past it and know who the winner is so that I can either complain or celebrate. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting perspective, man, and I'm sure you're not alone in that. I'm sure that's a perspective that many people down in our comment section will uh, express alongside you and, you know, show that solidarity, so to speak. Uh, me, obviously, I'm hyped for the triple threat, but, I mean, of course, I think it's because I'm hanging on to a dream, but we'll get more substantive in that commentary here in a little bit. As far as the mid-card title matches, I'm looking forward to both of those, and I'm with you. AJ Jericho has my curiosity greatly piqued. So, uh, with that said, let's go uh, right through this card, and I guess, yeah, we will start with, right, the two out of three falls match for the United States Championship. Yeah, sadly, we have to because it's on the freaking pre-show, which is just the dumbest thing. How is that on the pre-show? And the Wyatt Family versus Ryback Big Show and Kane is on the main card. Really, my bigger question, which, I mean, I don't mind that it's on the actual show, and I, I think we'll get more into why in a little bit, but the, the non-wrestling segment, you know, the cutting-edge peep show being on the actual card. So you have a wrestling match that's on the pre-show, and yet a non-wrestling thing makes it to the actual card. Yeah. I just find that a bit funny. But regardless... You know, I, I'm looking forward to this match. I've enjoyed the rivalry between these two. Uh, it's great to see Kalisto now a two-time United States champion. You know, very interesting to say that uh, because these guys have just been trading, the, you know, the belt back and forth. This is Del Rio's rematch. I do think this will be the final match between these two, and I, I think they're really making it definitive with it being two out of three falls because a guy that beats another man two times, you know, in the same matchup, that seems to be the final nail in the coffin. And, you know, this match isn't as easy to predict as I originally thought because there was a point where I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this is where Kalisto, he really shines. He comes away with it. You know, he goes on to WrestleMania, but that's just it. We don't know what exactly the WrestleMania plans are for the U.S. title. You could either go Kalisto and try and get everybody, you know, in masks and get behind this sympathetic baby face and give him that venue to work off of a really great heel or you could put it back on Del Rio and give him a new baby face to work with that maybe you want to try and make at WrestleMania with that kind of WrestleMania moment. Or uh, because you're the WWE and you think that everybody wants to see a match a million times before they could possibly get sick of it, you put it on Del Rio and then you do this exact same match again at WrestleMania with a yeah. different stipulation. Yeah, and you know what, Ashton, that very well could be. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me either, you know, to be completely honest. But you know what, I'm going to... Uh, 
I don't know if you'd call this playing it safe, but I am going to go like the safer route. I'm not going to predict a title change here. I do think Kalisto will win, and he'll win, you know, the second and third fall. It'll be back and forth to start, but then Kalisto will just win it straight towards the end. So Kalisto to retain the U.S. championship. I'm curious what you're thinking, though, if you've had the same kind of inner debate that I've had about this whole matchup. You know, if there's one bit of credit that I can give to the WWE on this card, it's that there are no super obvious, definitely going to happen type winners. Because even with this match, you would think Kalisto would be the hands-on favorite given that he is like the fresh champion and that he's beaten Del Rio four of the five matches they've had. But, right. you know, there's also the factor that all of a sudden now since Rumble, Del Rio's gotten like two or three wins over Kalisto. Yeah. So it's it's really tough to say. Ah, you know what? Just for the sake of trying not to be so salty, because I know normally when I do these, I just pick whatever result would piss me off the most. Just for the sake of not being so salty, I'm going to pick Kalisto and hope the WWE makes the right call. And I think I might have just signed Kalisto's death warrant by saying that. Hey, if you signed it, then my signature's right next to yours because we both picked Kalisto. I'm hoping they stick with it. You and I have talked multiple times, and I'm not going to rehash that discussion here about what a babyface Kalisto could be. Give him this rub. Give him this win. Give him that momentum going into WrestleMania. And speaking and then, of, of going into WrestleMania, what I really want to see, and I don't think WWE is going to do it because they don't see it as a big enough deal to put on WrestleMania, I want Sin Cara to turn heel, and I want them to have a match for the title at Mania. I think that would be an excellent program. I could sink my teeth into it. WWE is a different story, potentially. But regardless, it does require Kalisto being the champion to get there. So WWE, make the right call. Keep the belt on him. Let him keep riding this wave of momentum. And I'm guaranteeing you, the returns will come eventually. You know, it, it, you just got to be patient with it, and you got to stick with it. So Kalisto to retain. But moving on. Well, no, we hang do... on a second. The one thing that I will say is if they do decide to do Kalisto Sin Cara, don't right. do a freaking mask versus mask match. Because then... You're not going to unmask Kalisto. That's the dumbest decision you can make. And if you unmask Sin Cara, all it's going to reveal is that this is the second time in a row now that a Sin Cara character has been unmasked and it turned out to be Huniko. Right. That's a very good point. So don't try and overbook it. I just think do a very simple, straightforward storyline. You know, I mean, if you, even yeah. if you want to put some kind of a stipulation on it, make it like a ladder match or like – a last man standing man, you know, something different, something that isn't so stereotypical. Like, Oh, we've got a match with two luchadors. We've got to put wear masks on the line. Like that's just dumb. Yeah, I agree. I think if you want to give it a stipulation, I personally would love to see a ladder match between these two. The story practically writes itself. One you know, tag I, partner. I was thinking ladder match too, but then I also ran into the problem of, I think we're going to get another multiple man intercontinental championship ladder match. And I doubt they would want to have two ladder matches on the same show. Very true, very true. I mean, that is, uh, you know, withstanding if we do get an IC title ladder match, which I don't really think we're going to we're gonna see. I have my own thoughts about what we might get at WrestleMania or winning their column title. So for me, the U.S. title, that leaves that stipulation open. But regardless, story writes itself because you have one partner jealous of the other partner, and you don't have to overcomplicate things. So, right. But again, Kalisto has to retain for us to get there. So WWE, do not screw this up. Yeah. Uh, so do we want to open – the main card discussion with Owen Ziggler. That works for me. Honestly, I think that that is like the most cut and dry match on this entire card. I'm picking Owens to win. I don't think it's even a discussion, honestly. I'm picking Owens to win as well. I don't really see it as much of a discussion either. I think he will come away the, the winner of this feud and continue on with his second Intercontinental Championship reign. So it should be a good matchup, but Owens to come out on top. You know, you say that, but we've seen this matchup like 11 times over the last two months, and I'm barely even exaggerating. I know. I know, but I think Kevin Owens is going to finish it, and he's going to finish it strong, and he's going to move on to a new opponent after this. So yeah, Kevin Owens to retain. So. Yeah. You no know, WWE though. Owens will win and Ziggler will still find a way back into the title picture. Yeah, he'll beat him in like a non title match the next night and then that'll warrant another match at WrestleMania or something. Yeah. So All right, yeah. well all right. Well that was the uh, the Intercontinental Championship. Let's talk about uh you know what? Let's let's talk about the tag team Divas match. Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks taking on Team Bad. I think this one is also fairly cut and dry. 
I think Becky and Sasha have to win this because I don't think there's any plan for really giving Team Bad a big push for WrestleMania, whereas Becky and Sasha, there would be. I completely agree. You know, to me, this is Sasha and Becky Lynch's matchup. Sasha's still undefeated, for one. I doubt her first blemish is going to come at the hands of, you know, in this tag team match. Well, and even just playing devil's advocate, you know, she wouldn't have to lose in order for the team to lose. They could beat Becky. Becky. That is very true, but at the same time, to your point, I, I definitely think Sasha and Becky are the priority here. Yeah. I, I really don't see Naomi and Tamina getting that kind of shine this close to WrestleMania. Plus, with Sasha and Becky having that whole segment where they really made a big deal out of, hey, we both won our WrestleMania moment, I would hate to see that all squandered with them losing here. So yeah, Sasha and Becky easily get the win in my mind. Okay, so that's uh, you know the, the first two big matches that we're unanimous on. Uh, let's talk about the six-man tag. Ryback, Big Show, and Kane versus, I'm assuming, Harper, Rowan, and Strowman. Uh, to me, I gotta be honest, another straightforward matchup to me. I see the Wyatt family taking it. And I, uh, I, yeah, I see Strowman really being the difference maker. If that push of his is true, I don't see why you wouldn't start now and have him be the deciding factor in this match. You know... And honest- this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think this match would be made more interesting if it was an elimination match. I could agree with that to a point. Honestly, yeah. dude, and, and you want to talk about unpopular opinions, and, and I know I might get shot for this. I almost wish we didn't get a six-man tag. I wish we just would have gotten what I originally heard way back and just being Strowman versus Big Show one-on-one. It would have been one of the more standout matches to me on this fast lane card. I would be, I would honestly, you know what, though, John, the difference there, and I think that this is me agreeing with you, by the way. I think that the big difference is I don't give a shit about this match. If we got Strowman versus Big Show, I might not be looking forward to it from a match perspective, like, oh, this is going to be a five-star classic. But I would be more interested in it just to see what they let Strowman do. Because you and I have been hearing all these rumors that Strowman, you know, he can do a lot more than what they're letting him do so far. And that he's hiding a lot and that they're kind of keeping him held back a little bit before they decide to push him. I'm curious. I'm curious as well. But now I I feel like it's just going to be, you know, your basic get rid of Big Show, get rid of Ryback, triple team Kane win. Yeah. Yeah. I have the exact same feeling, but you know what? The Wyatt family gets the win, which is actually refreshing to say, even if it's against three people that aren't exactly the highest up on the totem pole. So Wyatt family for the victory here. Yeah. Okay. We're kind of getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, Let's talk about Charlotte versus Brie Bella. This is probably the scariest match on this card to me because if Brie wins, I am going to want to tear the hair out of my head. See, here is where I find things to be problematic, right? Before Brian's retirement, and I hate to make it seem like I'm blaming Brian because it's not his fault things happen, but before Brian's retirement, I'm thinking, oh, this is easy. You know, Charlotte, pretty much the night off. She gets an easy title defense victory, goes on to WrestleMania, whatever. Brian's retirement changes everything because the worst case, and I would hate to see them do it, to the Divas Championship and to the storyline that it seemed like they were creating, I could see Brie winning the championship here, but then losing it either the next night on Raw or like a week after. She wouldn't have a long reign, and to me, she wouldn't go into WrestleMania with the belt. See, um, and, and honestly, I think even uh, probably a worse scenario, which is, is what I had figured if they would give the title to Brie, I think if they give the title to Brie, she might just give the title up the following night and retire. Right. Like, okay, guys, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thankful to all these years that I've been in here and my sister giving me support and my husband and all that stuff. But I want to start a family and I'm going to retire. And then she hands the championship to like Stephanie McMahon or something. And we get like a tournament with the finals culminating at me. Yeah. Which I mean, hell, I wouldn't be opposed to a tournament, but like no, the, the tournament isn't the problem. The problem is Brie Bella being handed a championship for one day so she can retire with it. Exactly, Ashton. Exactly. And my big thing to really just kind of co-sign on to your thing: you have your heel champion, you have your contenders who are hot right now with momentum. Tell the freaking story. Everybody's been thinking that this is going to culminate in a triple threat at Mania, Sasha, Becky, and Charlotte. Or you just take Becky out of the equation and it's Sasha, Charlotte. I personally think the triple threat with the way that Becky has still been in the picture. But 
you know, regardless of that fact, whether it's Sasha and Charlotte or Sasha, Becky and Charlotte, you have your story right in front of you. Don't overcomplicate things to go for the cheap pop of, oh, Brian's, uh, Brian's wife, excuse me, got that big victory and she got the championship and, and all that stuff. You don't need to do it, especially if you're going to have the whole, like, or the floor bottom out from underneath her. She's going to fall through and then the title is in all kinds of disarray. Yeah. You have the road cleared before you freaking take it. So I'm going to say what should happen, Charlotte yeah. should retain. What I think will happen, god damn it, and this is where I struggle so much. I you know what? I'm going to stick by my guns. I'm going to say Charlotte retains because I think when we get to matches like these Ashton, I always overthink it. Always. Yeah. I'm going to try not to do it this time. I'm going to say that Charlotte retains. I'm not going to think the worst. She'll probably win by like a dirty pin, but she'll get the job done. So Charlotte to retain. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm going to sort of do the same thing that I did with Kalisto Del Rio and give the WWE a bit of a, a vote of good faith. And, you know, it might, it's probably going to be a mistake, but I'm going to pick Charlotte to win. And you know what? I'm not even going to pick Charlotte to win. I'm just going to pick Charlotte to retain because for all we care, Brie could get assaulted by somebody and it would cause her to win the match and Charlotte retains. So I don't know. Yeah, and can I just attack something onto that? Because that is a good point that you just made. Yeah. I hope not, because here's my thing, dude. I don't want Brie to have any claim to a Divas Championship oh, match dude, at WrestleMania. You, you, I don't think you understand where I was coming from. I wasn't saying that that's what I want to happen. I was right, saying right. that the WWE have this weird obsession with keeping the Bellas credible, so they might go there. Oh, I, I know that, dude. No, I wasn't even trying to infer that that's what you want. I know what you and I both oh. want. It's just the scary thing is I agree with you that that's WWE psychology at its finest. Yeah. And I'm hoping they don't go there because there's no need for Brie to be in the Divas Championship match at WrestleMania when, again, you've had such a nicely set up story. The table is set and you've just got to, you know, commit to it. So I'm glad you and I agree. Charlotte retains and we got to be careful with our language, not necessarily wins. But retains. Hopefully, it's in a definitive fashion and not that DQ kind of bullshit. But we'll see yeah. what happens. Okay, uh, just looking at the card, I believe we only have two matches left, and they're the two matches that I think you and I care probably collectively the most about. Those being AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho and the World Title Triple Threat. But before we get to those matches. Let's talk about what we think is going to happen on the Cutting Edge Peep Show with the New Day. Well, I'll go first, my man. I think it's time. I think we're going to see the debut of Enzo and Cass at yep. Fastlane. That's something I've been saying the whole time. I, I know. Yep. I, why else would you have it on the main show instead of on the pre-show unless it was going to be some kind of a big deal debut? And to me... <laughs> Nobody is more primed from NXT to be on the main roster than Enzo and Cass. I would, honestly, just from a, a, a quality and what we're going to actually get to see on the main roster perspective, I would almost prefer it to be Jordan and Gable, but I think that they are in line to win the NXT tag titles from Dash and Dawson, and Enzo and Cass's time has passed. Yeah, I completely agree with you, and I've got to give WWE credit here, if we're right, because, I mean, Ashton, if you and I are wrong after we've devoted this time to talking about it, I know we've been wrong before about Enzo and Cass debuting, but this would like really Like three burn. times. Yeah, like three times, but for whatever reason, I think this would really burn, because I think this would be perfect, because you've got Edge and Christian, the And New a lot Day. of people compare Enzo and Cass to Edge and Christian, and especially right. because Cass literally looks like Edge in Test's body. Exactly. You know, so I, I think you've got a perfect setup here yeah. for them to debut. And can I just say something, too, as a note? Because maybe this isn't the best place to say it, but I, I just want to get it out there. If Enzo and Cass debut here, I want the story to just simply be Enzo and Cass and the New Day. No Dudleys, no Usos, none oh. of that crap. Yeah. Just do a team on team feud for WrestleMania because here's the thing: have the New Day retain at Fastlane, have Enzo and Kaz win the titles at Mania. I completely agree because the New Day are exceptional heels. Enzo and Kaz, if WWE, because I know all of you guys, I, I know who I'm talking to, but if WWE has bothered to watch the NXT product, they know the quality of babyface they have in Enzo and Kaz. 
those two teams with their collective personalities can carry a WrestleMania program on their own. And I think they deserve it. I think you could have a wonderful, very fun tag title feud for WrestleMania. So please, please make us right this one time and have Enzo and Cass debut on the Cutting Edge Peep Show because that's a road to WrestleMania. And I'm not going to lie, given what I feel like we're going to get partially at WrestleMania 32, this will be one of the bright spots of that card. And I'm not even saying that with any sense of hyperbole or whatever. These guys will kill it if you let the cuffs come off and you don't get the Usos or the Dudleys or any of that crap involved. Just let them do their thing. So, Enzo and Cash debut, please, for the love of God. So, there you go. Yeah, yeah. that's You pretty much just echoed my sentiments exactly, man. Enzo and Cass are so long overdue. Like... If you weren't going to give them the titles at London, why did you keep them on NXT for that long? I know, dude. I, London, to me, was the time to pull the trigger. And if you didn't do it, get them up to the main roster where they could do a lot of good for the tag team division. Because here's the thing. It's like I said earlier. The New Day are exceptional heels, right? Nobody's going to deny that. But what's an exceptional heel team without an exceptional babyface team? And yep. don't tell me the Usos because that's a bunch of crap. So no, they're garbage. Exactly. They're you garbage. Give, and they're not even just garbage, John. They're hot garbage. <laughs> you give them a team like Enzo and Cass and any deficiencies that really do exist in the tag team division, they become less apparent because you've got these two great teams working with each other. Yep. And that buys you time to kind of replenish your division, which we know you won't do because that would require effort. But you could at least give us this one goddamn thing. Just one thing. God. So that's my rant about that. And again, you've been saying for a while, Enzo and Kaz, dude, if we are wrong, that might just be the first rant I've had on live reactions in a while. Well, maybe, maybe the second, and we'll get to that a bit later. But yeah, it, it may be right. I feel like it hasn't been that long since we last ranted on live reactions because like, didn't, wasn't it, was it Survivor Series or Hell in a Cell that Del Rio came back and we ranted then? Oh yeah, you're right, October. Well, I think we're due for one, damn it. So yeah, <laughs> I'm refreshed. Damn it. <laughs> oh man, anything else you want to say about the Cutting Edge Peep Show? No, no, let's talk about AJ Jericho. I, I think, you know, part of me wants this to be one of those like cut and dry Styles wins, we get him with credibility, and then maybe he moves on to feud with Owens for Mania. That would be sort of the perfect scenario if the WWE did things right with this whole thing. But for some reason, I cannot shake this feeling that Jericho is going to turn heel and win via some kind of heel tactic. See, here's where I stand, Ashton. It's not even... I mean, I do disagree with you, but I wouldn't even say, like, I'm really contentious with your point because I can completely understand why you would arrive at that conclusion. I think where you and I agree is that Jericho's going to turn heel. It's just the placement of that turn because you can almost visualize Jericho turning heel to win the match. I see Jericho turning heel because he lost it. I see AJ winning this series. Jericho is bitter and jaded that, you know, he really thought he was better than AJ. He got proven wrong and he turns heel. What I would actually prefer, to be honest, is Jericho turns heel. And on top of that, maybe we have Owens come out because he can and he puts the boots to AJ. So then you kind of say, okay, well, now Kevin is really, that's the second time he stuck it to AJ, the first being eliminating him from the Royal Rumble. Because I really want to see Kevin Owens and AJ Styles at WrestleMania. But if Jericho turns heel, I almost have to wonder if the program is still going to continue. You know, because where would Owens organically fit into that picture? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it would just, you know, it would just seem weird for Jericho to turn heel on AJ and AJ not have anything to say about it. Yeah, I, I, yeah it's, just, it's confusing to me. You know what, though, John? I, I can, you know, just thinking about it, I think there's a really good chance we get a multi-man match for the IC title at Mania. And I think that it could very easily be a match that has Owens and Ziggler and Styles and Jericho all in it, as well as other names like maybe Stardust, maybe Tyler Breeze, maybe a debut from NXT, maybe Neville, you know, lots of options to put in that kind of match that would make it interesting. So I don't think it's absurd to suggest that, that Jericho turns heel on Styles and they still end up in a match with Owens at Mania. 
I think that's an excellent point. I'll, I'll tell you what I would personally do, right, taking in everything you just said, because I even read recently that Jericho is going to be working through WrestleMania. I think, for me personally, you have Styles win the series, though granted, maybe you could get away with Jericho winning, but I, I think that's a matter of opinion more than anything else. I would have Styles win the series. Maybe he guns for Owens. Uh, but Jericho, of course, having turned heel after the match, he also wants to settle things with Jericho. We get a triple threat at Mania, but I'd have Jericho eat the pin from Styles. This way, Owen still has a gripe like, hey, I was never pinned. You pinned, you know, the lesser Canadian or some crap like that. And then you, have... <laughs> you know, it's so great that you bring that up because I've noticed they, you know, other than the one time that Rusev brought it up, they are really hush hush about Owens being Canadian. Right. It's so weird because normally when somebody is from a country other than America, the WWE likes to use that to get them heat. But Owens, uh, he doesn't need it. He <laughs> Like, there are so many other people. Like, look at the freaking League of Nations. That's an entire faction based on not being from America. And they use that to get heel heat. And yet Owens is just chilling on the outside of that from Canada. Like, dude. You're stooping way too low. Who needs to use that shit to get heat when you're me? And, you know, you're so right, dude, which is really, uh, I, I won't say sad. Like, it's great, but it's it's kind of frustrating for me because we've heard the rumors of, like, Barrett potentially leaving soon. And I thought, oh, well, maybe they would want to put Owens in to take his spot. But Owens really doesn't need it. If anything, the League of Nations would need Owens. Yeah. Because I, I have said over and over, you've got a quality heel in Owens. You just got to give a shit. Yep. And to me... I would love for them to start giving a shit by giving him that gripe at WrestleMania. You have a heel Jericho eat the pin on his way out, which is what Jericho does best. And I mean that as a compliment. I always commend him for being willing to do the job when it really matters. You have AJ being our continental champion, but you have Owens just being like, well, hey, you never beat me. And the last time it came down to you and me, I eliminated you from the Royal Rumble, you know, because who, who hates continuity, right? And right. then you just do that whole program. So... I don't think that's going to happen because it's WWE and that's my salt coming to the forefront. But I will say I do think AJ's going to win, just bringing it back to square one. AJ will win this match. But where are you in your conflict? Man, I got to say it. I, I really don't want to make this pick, but I feel like I have to because it's it's a nagging feeling and – you know how nagging feelings go, man. You know, you really should ignore them because it's probably not going to happen. But yeah. if you ignore it and then it happens, you snap your fingers and you're like, damn it, I knew that was going to happen. Why didn't I pick that? And, of course, on the other hand, when it doesn't happen, you go, well, shit, I knew I shouldn't have followed that gut feeling. What am I thinking? I need to be more logical. But for the first time probably ever, I'm choosing my gut over logic. I'm picking Jericho. This is a momentous moment in TwitWow Preview and Predictions, people. You know, you, you you better immortalize this. But you know what, Ashton? Like, here's the thing. I feel sick to my stomach right now. Yes, it is your gut feeling. But, uh, again, I don't think it's entirely, like, ridiculous. You know, like, in that realm of never going to happen. Because here's my no, thing. No, it's not ridiculous, but it's still gross. And it's even grosser <laughs> because of the fact that it's not ridiculous. Like, what the hell are you thinking, WWE? <laughs> Because to me, you could, I don't want to say very easily because I think that's a bit of hyperbole, but let me just put it this way. You could have Jericho win, and then if you and I would be correct in like a multi-man match, even if it is a triple threat, Styles, Jericho, Owens, you have Styles pinning the heel Jericho on the biggest stage. So that's really getting all of his momentum back because it's WrestleMania and because, you know, yeah. it was for a championship. So really, your idea could work. And I think my idea could work. And see, that's why I do see a kind see, of... See, but John, the problem there. with that is that my idea could work with proper booking. Yes. And then yeah. you take it into context knowing that it's WWE. And then those papers that you were staring at with those carefully laid plans that you have for the next three months, you just toss them into the air. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Well, speaking of all that, I, I feel like this whole discussion was the perfect kind of preface for our main event matchup though yeah because... uh, roman reigns dean ambrose and brock lesnar for the uh for the number one contendership for the world heavyweight championship i dude i'm gonna be completely up front i'm not gonna allow myself to outthink myself this time i'm picking reigns and i'm locking it in you know what if, if you felt gross with styles jericho i'm gonna feel gross with you i'm picking dean ambrose I, I'm just going to say it right now. Wait, how does that feel gross? That would be the right decision. Th that would be the right decision, 
But again, you said it, it, it like it, it's gross because not necessarily because it's like implausible, but because it does make sense. Mine is gross because it's it's a freaking pipe dream. I'm not thinking logically in this and that because I was even going to say, no, I don't have an answer for what Reigns would do as an alternate. No, I don't have any of the answers that anybody would ask me. But I have been so angry watching this storyline for weeks and weeks thinking that it's all about Reigns when it should be about Ambrose. But you know what? They gave me the tease with him being in the final two at the Rumble. They gave me the tease again with him kicking off the cement shoes. I've been wrong before. Brother, I hope you're right. This is... This is one of those situations where I will be more angry if I'm right than I will be if you're right. I hope that you are correct and that, you know, and it's not even like a Nostradamus thing where you're like making this super bold, amazing pick because they really have done a good job of building Ambrose up recently. This is really the the match that highlights what I said earlier, giving them credit because it really is difficult to make the pick. I The, the, the main reason I'm picking Reigns is because I feel like the only reason they've been building Ambrose the way they have is to trick people like you into thinking he has a shot at winning when right. he doesn't. Right, and I agree. And see, that's the thing. I can't even contend with you. I think what it comes down to, if I'm being perfectly honest with everybody, there is no really logical basis, and if, and if there is, it's incredibly loose for picking Ambrose. I think me picking Ambrose is just my way of saying, fuck you. To WWE and for making the choice of Roman Reigns. You're getting the main event of WrestleMania wrong again. Like, how many years has it been where I feel like they make the wrong decision? It's like when you discipline a child and you realize it's a lost cause because they're just not going to get it. Believe me, I speak partially from experience. I mean, for God's sakes, it's staring you right in the face. Dean Ambrose is the most over babyface that they have. He is the babyface right now. And granted, granted... Brock gets insane pops, but one, he's still on that limited contractual date, which he should be. That's and not me taking I don't know if back. you noticed, but his pops have actually been cooling down in recent months. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And, and I still, I don't know about you, Ashton, because I was going to have this as a point of discussion. If anybody's wondering like why we haven't been talking about Brock that much as a viable contender, I still believe Bray Wyatt Brock Lesnar is the plan for WrestleMania 32. I don't know if you've changed on that, Ashton, but I'm I'm still keeping my feet planted in that dirt. Wait, that say that again? Brock Lesnar and Bray Wyatt for WrestleMania 32, that's what I think they're going to do with Brock. You that's know, why I, I don't know, man. I, I'm starting to think that they had that idea and they might have cooled off on it, and I'm thinking – if they do decide to make the right decision and have Dean win this match, we might get Roman and Brock with no title on the line. See, that would be amazing to me because you could still, I don't know why you would, mind oh, and, you. And by the way, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I just wanted to get this out while right. I'm still thinking of it. You yeah. mentioned earlier, you know, when was the last time the WWE got a WrestleMania main event right? Uh, and, and I'm going to just say without fan backlash being, you know, forcing them to change it, WrestleMania right. 26. When it was Taker Sean. Yes, yes, I will agree with it. Damn, that's a long time, though. You're talking yeah, six years. Because 27 oh. was Cena Miz, and frickin' nobody wanted that. 28 and 29 were both Rock Cena, and again, frickin' nobody wanted that. 30 was going to be Batista Orton without fan interference, and 31 was just going to be Lesnar and Orton Reigns without fan interference. So they have been so horrible at making their WrestleMania main event something people genuinely want to see the first time around without obviously that fan uh, interaction making them change it, that the last time they truly got it right was literally Shawn Michaels' last match. Knowing that Reigns Lesnar wouldn't be the main event of Mania, I could buy that on the Mania card. Reigns oh, still hasn't no, gotten dude, it off I, the I back. totally buy into that. If if they want to do Reigns Lesnar without the title on the line, I would not only would I be into that, that would probably be one of my top two or three matches that I would be looking forward to on that card. Right. I mean, because here's the thing, you could really have it both ways. If you're if you're still committed to the project, which I don't know why you would be, but I mean, it's WWE. If you're still committed to the project of making Reigns a babyface, you you've given him, him the most legit obstacle you can. You could, uh, well, and, and then if he wins, he would obviously be the number one contender at that point to whoever wins the world title match. Exactly. And then you could have, I mean, uh, presumably Ambrose Reigns for Extreme Rules and however long you want no, that program see, to go. I was actually thinking because I think it would be best that if Ambrose does get to the world title scene, he loses so that he has to fight to get back to it, Daniel Bryan style. I would have Triple H beat him and then have Reigns take the title off Triple H at Extreme Rules. 
Hmm. See, now now I'm almost tempted to have a conversation with you that would take us all the way to WrestleMania 33 with The Shield, because it, it brings me back to my fantasy booking post, and I know how you've had your own ideas how we get there. But I'm going to I'm gonna hold off. I'm going to hold off. But back to this matchup, though. I mean, look, I'm going to level with everybody. Logically, yes, it really is looking like Roman Reigns. They've tried to make the story about Roman Reigns. But just like Ashton, I've listened to my gut. I'm usually the guy that listens to his gut more often than not when we do these. I'm doing it again. I'm saying Dean Ambrose. And again, if, if nothing else, it's more me thumbing my nose at these guys because Ambrose should be in the main event this year. I think he has a great story. I think him working off of the authority would be magnificent. You give Reigns Lesnar instead. And honestly, with Bray Wyatt, I don't know what you do with him. He'd lose the match anyway. Find somebody that you want to build off Bray Wyatt. I don't know. But I'm picking Dean Ambrose. It should be a fun triple threat, if for no other reason, just the anticipation of either Reigns getting that pinfall and having us all lose our hopes and dreams, or can you imagine if Ambrose actually pulls us off the pop of everybody, both watching in that arena and at home, who wants Dean Ambrose? I think they've got a really special opportunity here that they'll more than likely squander, but I'd like to know, at least I put my chips in Ambrose's camp if it does go that way. So, Dean Ambrose for the win, please, because that <laughs> could be amazing, but... Yeah. Again, being realistic, being pragmatic, it looks like it's going to be Reigns because they're still trying to force the square peg and the round hole, and fuck you for that so hard. Because if you can't take the hint, why the hell should I even care? Uh, but yeah, that's my pick, Dean Ambrose. Yeah, sadly, I, yeah, I'm i picking Reigns. I hope you're right. I think I'll be right, but we will see. Yeah, I, th I think you'll be. And see, that's the thing. Like, what kind of preview predictions is this where I'm like, yeah, I think you'll be right, too. Then what's the point picking Ambrose? But again, I'm just, I'm, I'm stubborn and I'm stupid. And I'm, and I'm self-aware. And that's the only reason I'm still going with it. But goddamn, man. I think, you know what, too? It really bothers me that if you're right and, and Reigns wins this thing, you know Ambrose is probably going to go back in the IC title picture because he would technically, you know, have that rematch clause because nope. he lost in that five way. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, you, so you're going to take all that babyface momentum and no offense to Owens or the Intercontinental title or AJ and Jericho, who I would assume would also be a part of it. No offense to any of that, but you're going to take that babyface momentum and not use it in the main event when it's really all about the babyface normally. I mean, I know Seth came out on top last year, but regardless, you know, they wanted to make it about Reigns. That was fan interference. And, and you're going to waste it. Uh, oh, my disappointment, my life. Oh, God. All right. Well, that's all I have to say. Do you, is there anything else you want to say about this card? <laughs> no, no. That's, uh, you know, I've got my, I've spoke, I've said my piece, John. I've said my right. piece. Right. I've said my piece as well. Though, granted, just thinking about that triple threat all over again, and us really hashing out this discussion, it did exactly what I thought it would do. I'm, I'm hyped even more. I mean, let's get to Sunday. Uh, either stick the sword in me or remove it completely from my back. I'm ready for either outcome, so let's do this. Absolutely. It's going to be an interesting day on Sunday when we live react to this stuff. I think uh, – I'm going to predict right now, I think that the most popular live reactions we do is going to end up being Jericho AJ again. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah, I, I think you and I will definitely give some uh, memorable reactions to that. I'll probably lose my shit for when AJ's on offense, and I'm sure our fans will appreciate it, because I still don't think they've gotten over the fact that AJ is working with the WWE. So it's going to be really fun. Yeah. All right, guys, if you, uh, if you want, you can obviously type out your predictions. Let us know what you're thinking. Tell us if you agree with our predictions or if you have a completely different idea for the fast lane card. Uh, most, you know, if you, if you don't feel like typing everything, though, just let us know what match you're looking most forward to and why. And we will uh, we'll be scouring the comments. We always love talking to you guys. If you leave a comment that we feel uh, the, you know, the urge or, or compelled to reply to, you know, we will. We try and reply to everyone that we can. And uh, until Sunday, though, we will see you guys for live reactions.